a small workshop filled with wires, metal parts, and the faint hum of machinery, a man named Charlie had an idea. He wasn't just building another engine or a regular piece of technology. He was trying to bring back one of Nikola Tesla's most mysterious inventions. What made Charlie stand out wasn't that he loved Tesla, which he did, but that he had actually built something people said couldn't work. A turbine without blades. Yes, a turbine without blades. That sounds strange, right? Because turbines are supposed to have blades big ones. But before diving into Charlie's strange creation, it's worth taking a quick detour to understand what turbines are and how they normally work. The turbine story begins thousands of years ago. The first recorded design came from Hero of Alexandria, a Greek engineer from the first century AD. He built what many believe was the first steam turbine in history. It was simple, but clever. You'd pour water inside a sealed container, heat it from below with a flame, and as the water turned to steam, that steam escaped through tiny nozzles on the sides of two curved arms. Those arms were arranged tangentially around a central axis, and as the steam shot out, it made the whole device spin like a little rocket-powered sphere. Sure, Hero's turbine wasn't going to power a factory or light a city, but it showed something important. That moving fluids could spin a machine and create motion. It was basically a demonstration of the same principle that modern reaction turbines still use today. Tiny jets pushing a wheel around. Fast forward almost 2,000 years, and Sir Charles Algernon Parsons took that simple idea and turned it into something revolutionary. His design, known as the Parsons Steam Turbine, became the foundation for nearly every modern power plant. Instead of small jets, it used rows of moving blades and stationary blades arranged in a clever pattern. The moving blades took the energy of the steam, and the stationary ones redirected it into the next row, gradually transferring the steam's speed and power into the rotating shaft. The result was smooth, efficient, and powerful. But not all turbines are gentle or smooth. Another type, impulse turbines, takes a different approach. Gustav de Laval, the same Swedish inventor whose nozzle design later became key in rocket engines, developed this one. He didn't build rockets himself, but his nozzle helped future engineers do it. The impulse turbine's idea is simple. Instead of gradually guiding the steam, it blasts it at high speed directly onto blades or buckets. The fluid hits hard, bounces off, and transfers its momentum into motion. The faster the fluid hits, the more power it gives. Between reaction and impulse turbines, engineers found almost everything they needed. Together, these two types make up about 99% of all turbines used worldwide today. But that still leaves 1%, a strange, almost forgotten invention that works on completely different principles. And that's where Nikola Tesla enters the picture. In 1913, Tesla introduced a design so unusual that engineers are still fascinated by it more than a century later. It was called the Tesla Turbine, and what made it different was the absence of blades. Instead, it was made up of a stack of smooth metal discs placed very close together inside a sealed casing. That design alone raised questions. How could it possibly work without blades to catch and redirect the steam or air? The answer lies in something Tesla called the boundary layer effect, or what can be described more simply as the stickiness of fluids. When a fluid flows over a surface, a thin layer of it clings to that surface because of viscosity, the internal friction inside the fluid. This means that even something as light as air can drag a surface along if it moves fast enough. Imagine a smooth metal cylinder that can spin freely. If someone pours thick honey on it, the honey sticks to the surface and slowly makes it turn. That's viscosity in action. Now imagine doing the same thing with air. It might sound crazy because air doesn't feel sticky, but it actually is, just a lot less than honey. There's even a fun demonstration of this principle. If you blow compressed air against a tomato or a ping pong ball, it will start spinning, even if its surface is perfectly smooth. That's the same invisible stickiness Tesla wanted to harness. So how do Tesla turbines use that effect? Instead of having blades, it relies on many thin disks packed closely together. High-speed steam or air enters the turbine tangentially, swirling around between the disks. As the fluid spirals inward towards the center, the sticky boundary layer drags the disks along, causing them to spin. The smoother the flow, the less turbulence there is, and the more efficiently the turbine converts that flow into rotational energy. 
In theory, this design could reach extremely high efficiency, perhaps even higher than conventional turbines. But there's a catch. In practice, the Tesla turbine produces high rotational speeds, but very little torque. That means it spins very fast, but doesn't push very hard. For industrial power generation, torque is what you need. So most people dismissed Tesla's design as an elegant but impractical idea. Most people, except Charlie. Charlie, a physicist with a passion for building things, didn't see the Tesla turbine as a dead end. He saw potential. He believed that under the right conditions, it could deliver impressive torque, especially at lower speeds. The torque, he explained, is proportional to the difference between fluid speed and disk speed. When the disks are slow and the fluid is fast, the torque is highest. Charlie noted another advantage, simplicity and durability. Traditional turbines with their fragile blades can't handle dirty or wet steam. Over time, the blades erode, crack or lose efficiency. The Tesla turbine, on the other hand, has no blades at all. So there's nothing for debris or minerals to damage. It can handle unfiltered geothermal steam directly from the ground, minerals, salt, rocks and all. That makes it a great option for small-scale, low-cost power systems that could run in harsh conditions without constant maintenance. The turbine Charlie built wasn't a tiny lab model. It was a full setup with 75 thin aluminum discs stacked inside a metal casing. The discs weren't even welded or bolted together. Instead, each had small dimples stamped into it. Those dimples acted as spacers, keeping the discs perfectly aligned while allowing them to expand and contract freely with temperature changes. It was a simple, clever way to make manufacturing easier and keep the whole system flexible. For power generation, Charlie connected brushless DC motors, the kind normally found in high-end RC cars, and used them as generators. Each could produce about 1,500 watts at 12 volts and around 3,000 watts at 24 volts under peak conditions. To test his creation, he connected the turbine to a compressed airline at just 25 pounds per square inch. The result? It generated enough energy to light up two 600 watt bulbs, over 1,200 watts total, from just compressed air. That moment when the bulbs lit up was pure excitement. It wasn't just an experiment, it was proof that Tesla's idea could work in the real world. With steam instead of air, the output would be much higher. Charlie's setup was surprisingly compact, fitting on a small stainless steel table. He even joked about measurement systems. It's 285 millimeters squared going in, he said, laughing. When are you guys going to convert to metric? It's just shameful. He added that although all his physics knowledge was in SI units, real world parts were still made in American standards. He wasn't just making these for fun. Charlie started a company called Tesla Energy to make Tesla turbines accessible to anyone who wanted one. His dream was to build small, affordable micro steam power plants, systems that could power a garage or home during outages or work off grid using geothermal or waste heat. The entire setup could fit on a tabletop and produce electricity quietly, efficiently, and without the need for fossil fuels. Tesla himself once said turbines were his favorite invention. Whether that quote is fully verified or not, it captures how proud he was of it. It represented his belief in simplicity, elegance, and the hidden power of natural forces. Today, inventors like Charlie are carrying that same spirit forward, tinkering in garages, challenging assumptions, and bringing back ideas the world once forgot. Charlie believes innovation doesn't always come from billion-dollar labs. It often starts in someone's backyard with a bit of curiosity, patience, and a lot of mistakes. He says that's how new technologies are born. His company even runs small giveaways and educational projects to inspire others. He believes makers should support one another, sharing knowledge instead of keeping it locked away. The creator of the original video also follows that same philosophy, giving away 3D printers to encourage creativity and learning. In the last giveaway, a viewer named Dorps won a brand new printer. The rules were simple, subscribe, leave a like, and suggest an idea for a future video. The most liked comment would win. 
And that's how this story ends. Not with a big corporation or a government lab, but with a small team of builders, a dream, and a turbine that spins silently on air. Maybe Tesla was right all along. Maybe the simplest ideas, the ones built on nature's own laws, are the ones that could change everything. As the lights flickered on in Charlie's workshop, powered only by the air flowing through his Tesla turbine, one thing became clear. Innovation never really dies. It just waits for someone brave enough to pick it up and give it another spin. And for the record, he still hates tomatoes.